What's up guys? Hey guys, welcome back to the Del Pratt family channel. I would love to have you over here. Definitely. And today we have a very interesting topic. We know we're not gonna like it. Yeah man, go ahead, tell him, tell him. How to buy a house in 2023, 2024. Yes, yeah, so um per the title, not limited to just buying houses alone, but also for buying land. Alright? So yeah, lead the way. Alright, so we did a video like this before and it was very interesting, but we think in 2023 the market has changed a bit. Definitely. And when I say change a bit, we mean that it's now a lot more competitive. So back when we were buying our house in 2019, 2018, it wasn't as, as competitive. Persons were longing for homes, yes, but it's not like what I'm going. Not at no. All. Right. <laughs> um, but then you could have houses would have been built communities would have been built and then persons who could have gone and you know made a decision based on that but um no it's it's, it's not like that anymore um yeah. it's really some more really luxury apartments or some other um lesser known developers that you really find you know houses being built and you are able to go and view um and they're not being so and they're not so low you know and that's very rare and far and in between, to be quite honest. Because persons are out here house hunting. Um, persons are interested in buying land and house housing. Um, and persons are interested in buying land and house, not only in Jamaica, um, but also Jamaicans overseas and also foreign persons who are interested in investing in Jamaica for yep. whatever reason. Yep, yep. Right? Jamaica is a destination for the world. Don't forget that. I know you alone want to live here. <laughs> Right? Yeah, also too, guys, we've seen where it's like some of the developers in, in, in terms of select, selecting their, their applicants for housing, um, we don't necessarily feel very transparent, hmm. you know? Um, there, there's not a clear um, demarcation set out in terms of how they choose who gets a house. So based on that we'll just have to even for persons who can afford it, you just have to reassess and maybe try to look elsewhere you know and pray yeah definitely um we yeah, can man. emphasize that enough for um we even if you watch if you're if you are an og if you watch all of our videos you'd have seen or we did a video um the other day and one of the our subscribers were there and so that i got a unit and so i said i was just praying about it and god told me someone must just get up Take up all of my paperwork with my bank yard, go down to them office and just see my paper here, see mm -hmm. my money here, I yep. want a unit. Because a lot of the developers are not giving much information um, until, you know, at the end. And when they hear about it, it's sold out already. Yeah. Um, so she was, she worked with the Holy Spirit, don't, don't think they got no work, right? So because you know if you involve him. <laughs> <laughs> so the first step we're going to talk about is preparation. And it's key because the market is so competitive, as you mentioned before, you have to have this step down to even get a foot in the door for it mm -hmm. to even be a possibility. Yeah. So in preparation, we mean money-wise. Down payment. For new development, the down payment payment can range from um, 5% up to 10%. We've heard of somewhere um, asking for 15%, but that is very rare. Mm -hmm. It's usually between 5 and 10%. 10%. Yep, yep. Um, usually as well for new development, they would normally have like a package deal. Um, and you're going to hear more about that as we dive into the video. Um, for full, if you're buying a house already on the market, a pre-owned home yep. or pre-owned land, mm -hmm. then the down payment can range from five, but it's typically 10 mm -hmm. to 20%. Yep. Typically it's between 10 to 20%, um, 20% on the extreme end, but guess what? Because it's their private property, they can basically ask for anything they want. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the, if you are taking a loan, for this particular property that you're buying land or house then you need to get pre-approval letters right agent yeah, yeah um, you have to get pre-approval because as we mentioned it's very very competitive and because of that the developers know them get kakati you get me i say and um they can afford to they, they can afford to because there are so many persons inquiring about buying property so they basically have to streamline they would, I would have called in Jamaica, the, you know, the, the eyeglass them, quote-unquote, a person who really can't afford, but probably are just here to waste time. So they want yeah. um, to, to, to get those out of the way. They're and basically just, civil. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they basically just want to, to zero in on the serious person. So, yeah, back in the day, it wasn't really like that. You know, you could have just gone with a portion of money. It never even had to be the full deposit. You know, just go down with some money and put it down and wait till later down when closing time they're coming with the documents but as we said now it's became more competitive so they want to to ensure that everybody that they have signed up are are ready yeah. and qualified so because yeah. of that you have to be ready you have to be qualified and i want to tell you too even um the realtors right now mm -hmm. um they, they are not allowing persons to 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 view mm -hmm. or you know schedule a viewing unless they, they you send them pre-approval pre because, I you mean, know? if you really understand what's happening without a pre-approval letter, you know, I mean, you know, what usually happens in the days is if you come without a pre-approval letter and you get signed on to a lot, the lot is now fixed to your name. The developer can't do nothing with it except you come with the paper. When you carry your documents, go to a bank, there's no guarantee that you're going to get that loan. Yeah. And the developer typically has a um, 60 day period that they ideally want you to sign off on your loan so when you go to your bank and you get turned down because them say you can't afford it you have too much loan this yeah. and that then you have to go to another bank yeah and it'd it's be it will be like wasting the developers time um right there then and there so for, yeah. for um for and the realtors too so just to save everybody time and effort just have your pre-approval already you know if you are doing cash payment it's very important for you to know the source that you're getting the money from and to have the source readily available to be liquidated. Yep. What that means is you can't say I'm going to buy cash, but then you can't get your money six months down the line and you try to buy the house now. Yeah. You need to be able to get that money within a week, within a few days after signing off on that sales agreement. All right, let's go to the other step. Know your ideals. What do you actually require mm -hmm. and what can you actually afford? afford. Yep, yep. And we would recommend that you take a, a serious look at what you require. Persons are buying into homes that they don't want. And after you get the house, then you have a cause problem mm -hmm. with the association, with the strata complex. Right. If you know so you can manage a strata because you don't follow the rules or you're disobedient or you have problems. Yeah. You, Being you, orderly, nobody yeah. nobody going on a strata. Yeah, like you probably want to paint your house in a particular colour when everybody is telling say this is the colour. Um you, you you don't want to pay maintenance fees. You know various issues and we mentioned in a in a, um, mm. in a recent video i think the, the um last yes. week's video where a person bought into a development and mm -hmm. um they that they were that restrictive covenants yeah there were restrictive covenant covenants there and the person just ignored them and go ahead and, and do what they want to do and then they they ended up in court so to avoid all of that um determine your ideals right know what you want and you know find the perfect property f uh, f for that you know so that includes the community that you would like to live in mm -hmm. um the type of community the number of rooms that you would like yep. the type of house um the type of living room the if you're buying land then mm -hmm. what size land you would require the parish that you want it in the city you want it in any requirement you have basically you have to get that out there and then get a realtor yes also you need to have a, a budget a proper budget in mind because at the end of the day whatever um what's available it will be dependent upon your budget as well so bear that in mind um, and your salesman can help you with that so your real estate salesman can definitely help you to flush out what is available for you at your budget yeah man definitely all right, so uh, we mentioned before about the availability of how, you know, uh, ideal um, Yeti community, you know, that most persons would want. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we have to kind of broaden our, our, our scope, broaden, you know, our expectations a little bit, you know, um, to perhaps, you know, look to maybe buy land mm -hmm. and build. Mm -hmm. That's an option as well. And we're going to be delving deeper into this and showing some more options as it relates to this in further videos. But just to note that, the option is there to buy buying land and build which um in, in a lot of instances work out um cheaper and you get you get more, you get more as well you know um the the other thing is sometimes we see a lot of persons in our comment section being mad and they're saying oh me can't get no house in this community that community everything is sold out um the houses are so expensive you see if the house 
out of your the house that you ideally want now is out of your budget what you have to do is increase your financial ability to afford the house and if you cannot do that immediately then you have to take what you can get mm -hmm. i would recommend that if you want ideally a house in cherry gardens me now say you can't get it but if your money right now is a house in portmore i would recommend that you take the house in portmore mm -hmm. because it does not mean that you can never get a house in cherry gardens it means that you are one step closer yep. awesome. if you get the house in portmore you you can fix it up you can upsell later on mm -hmm. and get more money when you're now in a more comfortable position to get the house you want in cherry gardens but then don't sit down and complain and mope about the prices and do nothing because it will not get better for you right definitely um so you know in addition to what you said basically just to add as well a house an investment in a house is not um it's, it's, it's basically like you're buying a car so you buy a car today and after a few years you don't like it anymore you can sell it and upgrade you know or you can you can rent it too you know so you don't have to you don't have to be living there all of your life because a lot of persons they approach you know buying real estate as if it is this um like it's a marriage you like know if it's a it's a lifetime thing it can be a just no thing yeah you buy it for now you sell it later yeah, yeah. so to begin the process of home ownership you have to begin a search Mm -hmm. So you can do it yourself or you can involve at this stage your realtor as well. Um, your realtor will definitely help you to get those viewings in to select those properties in the ideal environment for the ideal price that you want. If you are going to do this by yourself, then there are a couple areas that you can look. So you can look at your new developments. You can look at your developers to see what projects they have currently know and those coming up. Um, keep in touch with them, get on their waiting list and so forth. You can also go on your NHC website. You can go on your the, the private treaty website as well. Yes. Um, all the banks, all the banks that do mortgages, they would have um, private treaty listings. But of course, with private treaty, this might be a little bit of a more tedious process because the the homeowner that you know the house foreclosed with, um, they might be still living at the premises. So to get them out might be a little bit of a challenge, you know. But Private treaty homes is definitely an option, you know? Definitely. You can also browse realtor websites. Those are the website for real estate dealers that they oftentimes list their, their listings on their website, the MLS website. Um, they have listings of pre-owned homes and even new developments as well. It's a good place to actually look. Um, the next thing to do is to do a drive up. So you can do a drive through to any community that you ideally want to live in. When you have your free time, you and your family, your friends, your spouse, drive through those communities to see if there are any actual signs mm -hmm. for houses or land for sale because in those what? communities. Guess what, guys? A lot of developments that we cover uh, is just by us looking around, you know? So we're going to one particular location and we, we discover something else and we go and yep. we, do our, we, we do our research, we inquire and we are able to do, to do um, tours. So yeah. just the same way how we are able to provide those kind of videos is the same way you'll be able to purchase real estate as well. Yeah, you know? definitely. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye and an ear out. Once you have done your research and you've located your, your property, the perfect property for you, the next step is to approach the seller. You can do this through your real estate agent. It should be a lot easier. Um, but you can also do it yourself um, by getting the person's information, um, submitting your offer, and asking to view the premises. Um, it's very important that you view the property that you wish to buy and to know if there are any defaults, any defects, any issues, if it's a fixer upper, mm -hmm. what exactly does it entail right. for me to fix it to get it to where I want it to. This is the step where you have to be prudent, and this is the step where a realtor can really help you to get through those steps by getting all these information for you and ensuring that you're making a very informed decision yep. so this is also the stage where it's very important for you to get information on the title get a copy of the title it should be available for you mm -hmm. um, you should look at the restrictive covenants so therefore it will tell you what you can and cannot do with the property mm -hmm. get a eye in on what the environment the is community like, is yeah. supposed to be like so you can know if it's a you know if I can live there if it's for me yeah. so after you make an offer 
this is the stage where your offer can be accepted or it can be rejected and you can make a new offer so this is a stage where you can negotiate and your realtor can help you with this yeah um it's also the stage where if you have selected a property that is in a new development agent then mm -hmm. you can basically um go into them select your lot um give them all your information and once you and that developer have you know agree that we are going to be doing business together mm -hmm. you basically get to select your lot and you get all the relevant document that you need to carry to your loan institution right so too with your pre-owned home seller they will also give you a copy of the title and all those relevant information and you will need to do a surveyor's report so at this stage now you would want to get your surveyor's report done um if it's a new development most of the time the developers will already have that done and uh, the cost for that will be baked into the overall you know closing cost that of course we will discuss um shortly all right definitely if it's a pre-owned home then you'd have to foot the price for this particular survey um survey or support and you'd have to take this along with your other relevant documents to the bank or the financial institution of your choice financing this is where it becomes very important for you to have had that pre-approval letter yeah. once you if it's a new development when you reach to this particular section where you've selected your lot you've gotten your document they're expecting you within 60 days to come back with your letter from the bank to say we are going to be depositing the money into your right account. that's like a letter of undertaking yeah. you know so at this point now yeah. you're basically well on your way to home ownership um from this point moving forward now then the lawyers um can go ahead and do the transfer documents you know and the same thing will will go for a private home um if you are buying a house mm -hmm. um from a pre-owned if you're buying a pre-owned home or a land the same thing goes so you get all the information on the survey as report and you take this to your bank lawyers get involved there is however something that you must consider if it's a pre-owned home mm -hmm. um if you're borrowing from an institution the institution sometimes will allow you to use their lawyer to secure their money at the end of the day um and that can be a little bit better for you because mm -hmm. they'll put the payment the lawyer payment within the processing fees and, and all that for the right, loan right um however if in, if not and you're buying it cash or for whatever reason your institution will not give you their lawyer to use you'd have to actually get a lawyer yourself so the lawyer fees would range from anywhere from like two percent up to four or five percent there about but typically it's around two to three percent will be the lawyer fees mm -hmm. right so just know that if you're buying a house for ten ten million dollar for argument's sake just expect you to be paying around two three hundred thousand dollars for for legal fees you know um oftentimes when persons are buying homes they don't um factor this in but this is an additional cost as well um added to some others that we, we are mentioning throughout this video that you have to take into consideration when you're actually purchasing a home so basically this is in addition to the down payment um all these other fees that we're mentioning would be an addition to the down payment especially if you are buying a pre-owned home if you're buying a home from a new developer then oftentimes it is worked into the agreement that you would mm -hmm. have paid up front right and they would call right? they would call that the closing costs yes right and and the closing costs also includes um transfer tax and um registration fees stamp yeah. duty stamp duty thank god is a set price of five thousand dollars so you pay two thousand five hundred and the seller will pay two thousand five hundred and fifty fifty split so the transfer fee is going to be if you are selling the property so the sellers will pay this for you and that is typically two percent of the property value however the registration fee is 0.5 percent and i believe you'd have to pay that all right so we're actually backtracking a little now so we're going back to to where um you're securing this this property so at this point now the lawyers will come come together and you know your lawyer and the seller's lawyer will you know exchange documents yes and then the basically. sales agreement yes yes and then the sales agreement will be provided and yeah yes so basically yes they start signing documents right here once cash starts to exchange hands then we have an initial agreement once you get your um, approval letter from the bank then the lawyers will come mm -hmm. in place and then do what agent says start transferring information right now if you're 
if you are buying to an institution your steps are going to be a bit longer than somebody who is buying cash so if you're buying cash you do your survey as survey as report your lawyer looks at it once you're okay with the property and the survey as report then boom you sign your paper and over your money. Mm -hmm. If you're going to the institutions, then you have to go to the institution and get your approval letter, which takes, you know, about approximately 30 to 60 days. And then you bring that letter to the, to the developer or the seller. And then the two lawyers start corresponding and exchanging documents. And that's when the fees that we mentioned come in. The stamp duty, the registration fee, the transfer fees, and all those, and the lawyer fees. So you have to have all the money there as well. So preparation step mm -hmm. is very important. You have to get the money there before. Right. You can't be scrambling for it now. Right. So as we mentioned, um, for a new development, the, uh, um, all of these additional fees would all, all be considered as the, the closing costs. Right, so just expect the closing cost to be uh, around, around five percent, you know, of the, of the cost of the, the property. Yeah, so they have a deposit which is anywhere from five to, you know, an average around five to ten percent, but sometimes it can go up to twenty percent. So you have the deposit, and then you also have your closing cost, which includes illegal fees, the survey and report, yep. your, your transfer, all of these that we mentioned. All of those will come in the closing cost aspect. So. After all that is done, then basically you can go ahead and collect your keys, you know? Yeah, so at this yep. point now you are a fresh homeowner and congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> sir, ma'am. Yeah, 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 definitely. So you have your rock now mm -hmm. where you can do whatever you want to do it enjoy yeah. all right so we hope that you found this video very interesting we try to condense all those information in one um, and i hope that you found it very informative let us know in the comment section and remember to subscribe to the delta family channel if you haven't already i know that some of you watch our videos religiously but you still have not subscribed your subscription, believe it or not, really helps our videos to reach more people. Yeah, man. Also, and hit the like button. Mm. Like. Press like, guys. Really help us. It does. All right? It does. Yeah, and man. when you do subscribe, turn on your post notification bell and put the setting on on. That's the one with the dancing icons at the side of the bell. All right, guys. So, thanks for watching as always. All right. We out, guys. Peace. Peace.